Why do you want to destroy him? Why is he destroying his family? Uh, how long have you been for in generations? him? How long have you been in him? Spirit of what? Suicide. Right now, suicide? <laughs> Who else? Who else is in his body? Pride. Pride? Yeah. Huh? No! Uh, he has an incredible testimony to share with all of us, and I will just have you start from the beginning of your childhood. Okay. Um, so I grew up in with two addicted parents, uh, foster care of drugs, addicted to drugs. Yep. Um, my father was never around, um, so I was exposed to drugs at a young age. Went to foster care, had to live here and there, um, which eventually led to my own addiction, starting at age 14. Um, just started with just marijuana, alcohol, and then it led to pills, eventually led to uh, methamphetamine, uh, heroin, fentanyl. And I was basically doing everything, drinking a lot, doing a lot of uh, horrible things. And can you tell us uh, through your addiction, like you, you mentioned that you had a couple of overdoses. Can you mention how many and what happened there? Yeah, so I've experienced six overdoses total. Um, woke up in the hospital a bunch of times, uh, not knowing what happened at first. The worst one, I was, uh, I was found at a park. Don't know how I got there. My chest was broken from somebody doing CPR. Uh, the doc, they got me in the ambulance, got me to the hospital. The doctor hit me with Narcan five times. Um, that's the drug that counteracts fentanyl. Uh, and then he gave up on me because I was gone. And then all of a sudden, I started puking and came back to life. And I woke up the next morning in the hospital. And, and tell us, yeah, come on. Uh, God's hand was evident in his life, even through those six overdoses. Now, can you tell us a little bit about what end, ended up your encounter with the troop officer and go from there? So uh, I was uh, living homeless, living in a tent, uh, addicted to drugs. This was last July when uh, the Lord sent a state trooper. There was a crime that had been committed up from where I was staying. It was a fire in a, a train car and the state trooper responded to it, walked down the trail and seen me there, standing there. I was just, I was waiting for him to harass me or something. I asked me if I had done it, which I didn't. But he, he didn't ask me anything like that. He actually invited me to church. Yeah. Me and him were texting for about a week or so. And he asked me, do you want to get your life better? Do you want a change? And I did. I, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to die in addiction. I didn't want to end up like my family. Um, so he knew uh, the director of Teen Challenge up here in Tri-Cities. And, uh, because the director at the time was actually a, a police officer in my hometown before he came up here, has actually arrested me before. <laughs> but yeah, he, they, <laughs> they brought me up here. Uh, and that's the second day I was in Teen Challenge. That's when I, I gave my life to Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't ignore him after everything that had happened and how I had gotten here. And uh, the director came and he sat down next to me and he just looked me in my eyes and he said, God's going to do such amazing things in your life. And I just, uh, I believed him. I broke down. I started crying. I threw my hands up. I said, God, I won't ignore you. I can't ignore you. I just won't ignore you. And so that began a journey of really trying to just get to know God as best as I can by trying to do everything to, to, do, to be pleasing to him. I started to pray a lot, started fasting, started reading Bible, you know. Uh, oh yeah, I was delivered from drug addiction the moment I gave my life to Jesus, I've never craved a drug ever since, so. Let's give God some praise, come on. So, yeah, it's just been, uh, I, I'll, I'll be 27 in about a week, but this year has been the best year of my life. I've never experienced such amazing things. And I'm just thinking, if I can experience this many blessings in one year, like, imagine the rest of my life. I... Amen. Now, for timeline's sake, uh, you are 11 months in Teen Challenge, correct? Yep, I graduate next July 14th, so. And tell us what happened about a month ago. Oh, so I, I came here to Hungry Gen and uh, experienced a deliverance from, from <laughs> demons. So, yeah, it was, it was really intense. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it was. It was, it was amazing. And uh, yeah, I just found afterwards. that after that, um, yeah, afterwards it was amazing. <laughs> so uh, 
After that, I experienced a deeper connection. You know, I, I watched Pastor Vlad a lot, on, and I got a lot of inspiration through, through your ministry. So, yeah. So, uh, where was I? <laughs> so, no, that's okay, Nathaniel. That's why I'm here. Um, this is the part where you were mentioning about the difference, where you received deliverance, and you saw and noticed how uh, something was heavy on you, and it was gripping your relationship with the Lord. But once you received freedom a month ago, you said that things were lifted off. You were able to praise. You were able to worship and pray and get closer to the Lord and love on people. Now, that being said, you're 11 months in. You're about one year to graduate from Teen Challenge. Tell us, what are you up to? What's your next step? What do you want to do? So um, in August, I'll be starting at Bible College in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. It's a college called American Indian College. I'm a, I'm a half Native American, and so I've seen a lot of darkness in my people, in my tribe, a lot of lack of God. And so I plan to uh, just be an evangelist to the Native people around the country. So... Let's give God some praise. Come on. God is good. He's alive. And he right here shows God's resurrection power in Jesus' name. Amen. God is so good. Such a powerful testimony, Nathaniel. Can you just give last words of encouragement for moms, dads, or anybody that is suffering in a drug addiction or they know someone that is struggling in a drug addiction? What do you want to tell them today? So I would say the, the most, the best thing that you could possibly do, because it's really hard to try to know what to do for somebody that's addicted when they don't listen, when they don't react the way that you would hope, and, and they don't see the, the fact that you care about them, you know. Um, I would say prayer. Uh, just cry out to God. Literally just get on your knees and cry out to God. I have a sister that she literally would, would, she would stream tears and cry out to God for me. And uh, she told me when I got here and I gave my life to Jesus, I was a couple months in, and I was like, sister, do you... I was like, I can't really believe this is happening. She's like, I knew it was coming. She said, I knew it was coming. So, yeah, so, Amen. yeah, prayer. Thank you so much, Nathaniel.